Hey guys, Doug back with you today with another fun one. And when I say fun, I mean really fun. Little, uh, when I was a kid, there were mouse doors. You'd find them in all the little, you put them against the baseboard or whatever. But now we have fairy gardens. We have gnome houses and gnomes and all kinds of little crafty areas. And you can put them on your countertops and whatever. But uh, they're just fun, cute little doors. And uh, this is the first one I made to get me going. And uh, I got some little eyeballs in there. But then I downsized them for uh, for video sake and uh, made some different shapes and sizes. There's two more, a couple more here. Just fun little doors that you just can put anywhere you want and uh, little, little secret doors to another world. But regardless, uh, fun project, simple project, and uh, yeah, let's just get cracking. The piece of wood I have here is basswood, and this one here is, this is four and a half inches tall by about two and a half wide, and it's about three quarter. Now, it doesn't have to be four and a half, and it doesn't have to be two and a half, and it doesn't have to be three and a quarter, but that's just what we're going to use today. And I think, to cover our bases here, I think I'm going to, uh, we'll do something like this one, and then uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of stone on the sides instead, just to give you a good, a good mix of uh, what I'm talking about here, so... If I wanted to do a round top one, it'd be no different. I would just take my little dividers here and, uh, you know, draw the, draw a round top, cut it out, and uh, just go around like that, okay? So that's no, uh, that's no brainer. But uh, add some stone to this one, and uh, we'll make our own. So what I want here is I want a header on the top there. It seems a little bit, I need more light on that. But, uh, so we want a heavier header. So let's just draw a line across here. We'll keep that wood. And then for this one, uh, let's do the sides in, uh, we'll do the sides stone, all right? So, that's it. Pretty simple. Now, what we're gonna need are a few different tools and we'll get to them as we come, but uh, I'm gonna use a couple, maybe one <laughs> OCC tool knife. It's this inch and, inch and a half, and that's a good two inch. But uh, just to get going, what I want is a bit of a reveal from that header. So I'm just going to come across here. All right. I'm going to cut up because I want that header. I want that header to stick over, over the stone. All right. So now we got to thin it all down. Of course, that's the wrong way. So we want a good, healthy eighth of an inch like i said look at the size difference this one's huge all right and that's the one i that's just got me going on these things let's get these all up here closer i just made that one for fun and then uh, i thought hey there's a video in here so i'm gonna thin the sides a little bit all right Let me move that camera down all right we're not going for a big polish. This is going to be all cut up again. We just wanted to thin that side a little bit just so that that beam will stick over the edge as the beam should. These people were too lazy to put a lentil in to bring the stone across. So we're just going to put stone up the, up the sides. And that gives you a taste for all the different uh, mediums. Get the most bang for a buck out of out of one all right so anyway roughly done but you can see just a healthy healthy eighth of an inch and everything's going to be changed so all right so first thing i want to do is uh take my knife and run it across the line here all right So just like we did a reveal on the side, we're gonna need a reveal on the bottom. Cause that's a big, that's a big beam, right? So we want that to stick over a bit in the top. The stone will be underneath, all right? Like so. Then we're gonna do the same thing, running our knife down. And if it's not perfectly straight, that's okay because our stone isn't going to be perfectly straight. All right. Come across here again. 
I'm just going to come up and take the corners out. Now, I'm going to move the camera because I'm going to use a little bench hook here. But uh, I'm going to use a number number five. You can use a seven. You can use anything. Let me bring these all over here. What I do want is I want a little bit of a belly on the gouge. If you take a if I take a straight straight chisel, all it's going to want to do is just bite in and tear off. Okay, so you want those edges raised. So whether that's a three or a five, but you want it just so that you don't. Uh, Dig those corners in, see? Nice and smooth across the cut. Okay, instead of digging in and tearing it up. So maybe I'll try and do it by hand here. So I'm just going to run that along the side here. This is uh, the prelim preliminary cuts here. It's pretty, uh, pretty simple. We're not going to... Uh, Get too fussy. We want it a little bit rustic looking too, right? But if I, yeah, let's move the camera. This is what we call a bench hook. It doesn't matter if it's just anything to push against is all it is. If you, even if you have a workbench, you can screw a piece of wood down, but it's just nice to have something that you can push against. So I'm just going to use that. And we're just digging out that doorway. We want that frame to stick proud of the door and we want the header to stick proud of the frame. So. Like I said, you can use any size. It wouldn't even matter if you had a like a number number eight. You can use the sides a little bit more. But for video's sake, I want to be a little bit more uh, time sensitive. So I'm just gonna dig that all in there. And even as far as, as level goes, we don't really care. We want, like I always say, if it's carved, let's make it look carved. So a little rustic door would be nice to have a little gouge marks in it. All right. Now we want to create a shadow on that. So I'm going to cut down each side again. Okay. Cut down each side and across the top. And we just want to create that shadow of a door because the door is not one piece with the frame. So we want it to be separated. Nice, thin, deep cut there. One more time. There. There we go. I'll put you back on the desk. All right, there's our, our door there. You can see nice reveal inside there, all scooped out. Now we did this up to here, but we didn't come all the way down. So I want to thin that down. Like so. All right. So I'm going to take all these uh, saw marks off of here. Let's so end a little bit. And of course the end grain on the top. Now with the top being a wood header, we can take all the corners off. And we want this to be rustic, so don't uh, 
Don't try for perfection. Try to make some swoops and you know, make it the knock the corners off and Let's leave that for now. So let's put some stone down the sides, all right? So we'll just go like so. That works. And they don't have to be even, they can be staggered sizes. You can do whatever you want to do. All right. And all I'm going to do right at the bat is uh, just V cuts, simple little V cuts. just to separate them for now and if you had a v-tool you could definitely just run your v-tool across why don't we do half and half all right so you can do it with your knife or you can grab a, a v-tool do the same thing down this on the sides Other side. And cross the side. All right. Now our stone goes into the, uh, the door. So V cuts this way. don't think you want to stick your uh, your v-tool into the door all right see that so you can see that it cuts this way and the same on the side i like to go a little bit bigger remember these all have to have a uh, mortar between them too right so and we're gonna go very very rustic so there's our stone separated let me take the corners off the bottom right. now there's something here see that how that sits there see that space on the bottom here there's a the door it's gonna stick. You're gonna have to come and plane it off later if you leave it like that. So we're gonna put a little cut in both sides like so. And we're just gonna cut that way. And that way. Now when we put that door down, you can see that shadow underneath of there. So now it will swing. All right, up here the stone. Go underneath that piece of wood. All around. All right. Now, when I do stone, let's go this way. Maybe this way. That way. We want it to look very uneven right. this random all right make some some skinnier than others a little bit of rounding let's take away all those Sure. So let's see that, that side. I'll look at that side. All right. Even these corners are a little bit. And you may have to recut in the V again, which is fine. All right. 
Same on the side. The V cut in there. Alright. And the same thing. Let's knock all those corners out to start with. We'll go up and we'll go down. Down. Up and down. Just mixing it up. See that? That's what we're going to be going for. There you go. We're well on our way. All right. So none of them look like they're the same size. I'll just cut those V's in again. I do like to have a nice deep shadow between the stone. So make sure your V cuts are deep enough. But anything out of place and the corners a little bit. So there you go. All right, I can do that side on my own. So let's just make sure we're happy with this one. All right. Nice deep V cuts. All right, that's that side. I guess I'm gonna go into this side on my own. Taking my little number nine here and I just made a little, little semicircle on there. Nothing, uh, nothing too drastic, just a little kind of a knot. All right, I'll do another one over here. Just sticking it in. So, maybe we'll find something to uh, take my ice pick. Put a hole in there. Just gonna make a little, uh, little knot, right? I'm gonna take a V tool, kind of just go around it. You don't even need that gauge, or gauge, gouge, whatever I'm saying. You can do it all with a V tool. And then from there, it's going to go random. I'm not overly impressed with my knot. <laughs> That's a... Okay, forget the gouge and just use the little V-tool here. There you go. Let me take a little, little nick out of the middle. That was terrible, Doug. All right. There we go. That's better. <laughs> I want that to come off the end randomly. Just trying to put some wood grain in there. And the uh, on the sides here, do the same thing. Kind of go over the edge. And here. All right. And the top, same thing. This feed tool is just a little two mil number 12, but any V tool will do just fine. Don't get anything close to what I'm using. You'll be just fine. Right. I'm gonna put a couple of little, couple of little cuts in there. Make it look a little hand hewn. Alright, we're going to 
need a door or a window, I should say. We got lots of options here. Um, let's find center anyway. Something like that. Let's do something like this one here. All right. What do you call that? Gothic? Gothic-ish? Something like that. I'm just going to take my knife. Stick her in. I come back on an angle. You can put frames for your glass if you want. I'm not going to. It's coming in on a bit of an angle. But yeah, you could put a you could put a square window with the little window panes. But in the interest of time and having enough doors to last me quite a while. We're just going to do a simple one. Right. Yeah, when I was a kid, the uh, all the uh, cartoons and stuff, the mouse had little little doors in the baseboards that they would uh, go in and out of. So it wasn't so much about fairy doors back then, but. Now there's little fairy gardens. You could, uh, I said, doesn't matter the size of the door. You could, uh, if you had a hole somewhere, you just make it uh, the size of the, the size of the hole that you want to fill, and have a little secret door. Pencil line up there. <laughs> I see these uh, these guys here. I put little little uh, little eyeballs peeking over. It's the same thing on the big one here. <laughs> Just because. And then we're gonna need a, a doorknob. Doorknobs, probably a, a good third from the bottom, a thousand three. Setback from the hole is two and three quarter inches on a regular doorknob. <laughs> like you need to know that. But um, what do you want to do now? Let me, let's talk about doorknobs. We can do a, uh, a little thing. You know what this is? These are these little wooden rings that I buy at the in the craft department at the dollar stores, and then you just uh, you know just cut off a piece and glue it. That's what this one is. That's the big the big one. See that? It's just a cut off ring, and there's a, a small one. It's nice to have a little little backer plate. You can do the hinges too if you want to do hinges. But uh, what I like are these little uh, these little tacks. Well, uh, any any headed nail, you may you may have to cut it off, right? To uh, so you don't go through, but through the other side. But let's just uh, come on. What else can we do? Like I said, you can uh, you can frame your window if you want before you put your nail in. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's just run a V tool around that. Let's see what that looks like. It's all experimenting. It's all for fun, hey? Eh? There's something about these. Uh, Little uh, architectural things and inanimate objects that uh, they're so easy when you don't have a 
set of eyes or a mouth or you know what I mean it's a uh, it's just fun and uh, you can use your imagination There we go. That works. And now, what is our, uh, what is our door made of? Is it made of planks? Do we want some, some boards? I don't know why I put that nail in there so early. What if we just did uh, three boards? Mm -hmm. Dougie, 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 I gotta take that nail out of there. Take my V tool again, run her up. Pull a nail, ding bat. There we go. It's like so. If you want to go around, we can bevel all these edges. Make that frame stand out a little bit more. But you don't have to do this either. Now I'm just... You'll do the same thing. Just look at your door and see what you want to do and how you want to improve it. If you want to do a round window, square window, window panes. Lots of things you can do. But it's very fun. I would, uh, I was walking these around the house and I got a couple spots where I'm going to put them on the baseboard or in the kitchen counter. You can put one on the backsplash in the kitchen counter. Just pretending that there's a little, little doors for another little world. Put my doorknob back on there. Put some water on this guy. People always say, what do you put on there? It's, it's just water. It's, water just makes it all, uh, highlights all the cuts and shadows and everything. Right. But look at that. We just made a little, a little door. We got some stone and we got some wood. So we got a little little mix of both, right? So there you go. Well there you have it. We made a little door. I always wanted to uh to show how I paint the stone. So I think I might make a a painting video to, to go along with this video. But uh anyway, what a fun little project. Like I said, these little architectural type things with no faces, no knowns. No noses and stuff. Hard to screw up and uh, make it your own. You can make uh, big ones, little ones, round ones, square ones, stone, wood, whatever you want, brick. It's, uh, it's a fun little project. So big thanks to anyone who uh, hit that uh, tip jar this week. Always appreciated, never expected. And uh, like I said, I think, uh, I think this deserves a, a painting video to accompany it. So give me a couple days following this video and uh, we'll do a, a painting video to just to show you some different techniques for the for the stone and whatnot because I think it's uh I think it's worthwhile to uh to show the stone painting and, and how I would go about painting that so that's what we'll do. So alright guys I'll see you in a few days. Take your easy catch you in the next one. Bye bye. Bye bye. And bye bye. How do I go? There we go.